wind blowing the <laughs> Just
Let me encourage you to go ahead and find a seat. We will begin here in just a moment with uh, a few words of welcome and a prayer. Uh, and then, what are we going to do? Oh, we're going to eat. Yes, we're going to do that too. So uh, go ahead and find a seat, if you would. Welcome, everyone. I'm Lydia Huffman Hoyle, Associate Professor of Church History and Baptist Heritage here at Campbell, and I'm so glad to welcome you here tonight. This has already been just this incredible celebration, and we just want to keep it going a little longer. <clears throat> it really is a good gift, certainly to the faculty and staff, but I hope to all of you to have this time together. Tonight, we're going to hopefully enjoy some delicious food that's going to be located in two serving lines here on the sides. And then we'll take a few minutes to celebrate this journey we've taken together at Campbell University Divinity School. We also want to take a moment to look at what's ahead and to uh, encourage you to continue to walk with us in a way. No big fun drive or anything, so don't be fearful of that. I encourage you to catch up with folks at your table or meet those around you during dinner. Then we'll start the program um, that you see on the card in front of you there um, just after we finish the meal. Um, we're going to have a moment of invocation, and then I will give you some directions on the eating plan. Good evening, everyone. Um, my name's Alicia Myers. I'm Associate Professor of New Testament and Greek. Many of you were here before I was here, but thank you for coming back and enjoying this evening with us. It's great to see this family together um, and celebrating. Please join me in a word of prayer. God, we thank you for this time. We thank you for how you've sustained us and brought us to this place. We call on you to continue to guide us and take us where you will have us to go. Please use this food. Please bless those who have prepared it. Please use this time to strengthen bonds of fellowship and bring you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, on your table, you should find a card with the name of an Old Testament book on it. We um, figured out we had 38 tables we were setting up and that was so close to 39, we thought it was a sign from God. <laughs> um, so I'm going to invite um, tables to go to the two buffet lines by calling out your table's Bible book name. I don't know where any of them are. You're all shuffled together, so I'm not playing any favorites. Um, we have plenty of food, so don't anybody get anxious. There would still be something left when you get there. But before we do that, I want to recognize some groups of people who are present. And if you would just stand so we can send up a cheer for you so you have a little bit of knowledge of the folks that are here. If you are a current student or a guest of a current student, if you would stand now. <clears throat> If you are a member of the faculty or staff, um, past or present, or you are a guest of one of those people, if you would stand. If you, and if you're a member of more than one group, you can stand two times. If you are a donor to our school, 
um, if, or a guest of a donor, if you would stand. And finally, if you are one of our alumni or a guest of an alumni, please stand. Alumni know that you are making us you know, proud every day. Okay, with no further ado, I invite the following to head to one of the buffet tables. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers. <laughs> Yeah, my husband's supposed to arrive. Okay, Deuteronomy, Joshua, Judges, and Ruth. The Samuels, 1 Kings, 2 Kings, and 1 Chronicles. <clears throat> Okay, I think your chances are better in this direction. Second Chronicles, Ezra, Nehemiah, and Esther.
I know it. You coming to help me? Do you want to read? Do you want me to tell you what this says? And you could read the next one. Do you want to? Just a second, and I can hold you up. It'll be Job and Psalms. Could you say that? No? You sure? I bet you'd be great. Exactly. I know. You probably have an audience, too. Please don't get us in the B-roll. <laughs> Got you covered. Well, it's only the Old Testament, Larry. <laughs> so it's the Malachi people. <coughs> Job, Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes. Cross our fingers.
just to like get everybody <coughs> in line. Song of Songs, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations. Uh, no, you're you're in a dream. You're dreaming. You're dreaming. <laughs> Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel.
Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah. You want to want to say a word for us? Nope. You sure? Yeah. Yeah. You need some socks. Yeah. It'd be slippery, and that'd make it fun, wouldn't it? Exactly. I think so. And finally, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, and Malachi.
Good evening, everyone. Please uh, continue to enjoy this uh, wonderful dinner, but I'd like to uh, introduce the next part of our program. My name is Barry Jones, and I'm professor of Old Testament and Hebrew. We've had such a wonderful day already with great fellowship and uh, powerful worship, and also uh, many of us have learned where the minor prophets come in the Old Testament tonight. (laughs) So that has been great. Uh, There are some things that are so obvious that we can just forget to say them. But they they must be said. And tonight I'd like to um, remind us that uh, these 25 plus years of Campbell University Divinity School would not be possible without the 135 years of the history and mission of Campbell University. And, yeah, thank you. Uh, It's my honor tonight to introduce two special guests who will come and bring greetings from the university. Uh, The first is Dr. Jerry Wallace, our chancellor and the fourth president of Campbell University. Dr. Wallace began uh, teaching at Campbell in 1975, so without a doubt, the major events in Campbell's history of the last 50 years, Dr. Wallace had a major role in those things as a teacher, administrator, uh, and president, and now chancellor. Dr. Wallace was the provost when the decision to begin a divinity school was being considered and when the plans for the Divinity School uh, were made, and it is just uh, providential that out of his experience as a pastor, uh, professor, uh, dean, and provost, uh, he was there to guide the planning and the beginning of this school. And he still teaches Divinity School students uh, to this, this day through the Wallace Servant Leadership Fellows Program. I'm also pleased to introduce uh, the Reverend Faith Beam, Vice President for Student Life and Christian Mission. What a wonderful day it was when Faith Beam enrolled as a student at Campbell Divinity School. And since that time, she has uh, served the kingdom and served this university in many uh, very special ways uh, as uh, Director of Student uh, Activities in the Divinity School. And then uh, for many years as pastor to this community, uh, as the campus minister. And now she is vice president for student life and Christian mission. And what uh, an appropriate title for the role and the leadership she plays at Campbell. Uh, There could be no better uh, representatives of this special and uh, life-giving relationship that we have with Campbell University than these two people. Will you join me in welcoming uh, Dr. Wallace and Vice President Bean. Thank you, Dr. Jones. <clears throat> Thank you, Barry. Uh, I'll tell you from the bottom of my heart, uh, this orange and black tie is very appropriate this evening. I am very Campbell proud. And I think we need to applaud not only the Divinity School, but Campbell University in large, because that's who we are. Will you do that? (laughs) And I'm so grateful this evening, the privilege of being here and uh, being left around long enough to be able to see what I'm seeing here this evening, to see the faces of my students, to see the faces of my colleagues. One of the most enjoyable years that I had at Campbell was the year I taught in the Divinity School. It was a wonderful time. That year, I met students, and on graduation day, I had a cool place to watch it happen. And I did not have to do a thing. (laughs) 
Uh, I saw them sweating on the stage, but I had a wonderful, wonderful place. It was nice working with the faculty, some of whom were students, uh, for what I consider to be the anchor of what Campbell is all about, and that is to educate students for Christian service throughout the world. One of the great things of Campbell is that it is a worldwide institution. Uh, persons come here from literally all over the world. Uh, Dr. Campbell envisioned that and had that kind of dream and ambition. And, of course, I'm seeing that this evening. There's so many memories that uh, I have heard tonight that I resonate with completely. But if there has been anything that I watched happen at Campbell that has been like the Divinity School. It is unique, and we've done a lot of things here, but this is the most uniquely created school I know. The chapel, the chapel and scholarships for this Divinity School was the easiest money we ever raised. Because the people of North Carolina believed in what Campbell was doing, and we were able to be able to impress them to help us. I often think of that passage of Abraham and Isaac going up the mountainside. And he looked at him and said, Father, I see the fire in the wood. Where is the sacrifice? And he said, the Lord will provide. More than you want me to hear, I have illustrations of the Lord providing to make this place happen. It took courage for students to come here and to entrust their education in us. This school was born in a difficult time, but this school did not react to the time. This school went on beyond the time. And it has been blessed because of that. We had a lot of hurt among Baptists. And we dealt with that little by little. Uh, but this divinity school forged its own purpose and pursued it in a way that was open and winsome to all and not born in conflict but born in unity. I think that deserves an applause. I want to commend the faculty and the staff for endorsing that approach to the beginning of this school. A positive approach that we are here inside a university. This is not a seminary. This is a divinity school. It's where faculty here know the faculty in the sciences. It's where the faculty here know the people across the campus in all of the disciplines of this university, and this divinity school is a part of that. And I have seen that happen, and it has rejoiced in my heart. That is because of the commitment of the faculty and the staff to pursue its own way and to find its way as an integral part of this university. The facilities that we have, the uh, monetary support that we have, has come from people who looked here and entrusted us and said, yes, we want to help you. That's been a, one of the most redeeming uh, experiences of my life. So I want to pay tribute to the faculty and the staff of Campbell for going the second and third mile in reaching out and asking. You know, if you have a cause that you believe in deeply, and especially if you believe that God is directing you, you don't have to be embarrassed to ask people for anything that you think you need or to speak to a student forthrightly 
and say, we believe that this is where you ought to come and we will commit ourselves to giving you the best of the education. That's the ethos and the spirit of this school. And I pray God, as Dr. Cogdell has so magnificently said today, that that will be our mantra as we go forward. I'm delighted to be here. I have it as a great honor that I was a faculty member here. And I love this school. And as I look into your faces, I want to say to you that I love you too. Thank you. On behalf of Campbell's fifth president, Dr. J. Bradley Creed, I offer greetings. Dr. Creed could not be with us tonight because of his travel schedule, but uh, he certainly is with you in spirit and celebrates uh, this good day that we are remembering who we are uh, and how we animate that Christian mission through the work of the Divinity School. I also stand before you as a proud alumna um, I made my way to the creek in August of 2000, and Campbell has been gracious enough to let me hang around for 23 years, and I am grateful for that. Um, that was a, a formative moment and has been a transformative experience for me as a person, as a minister, and as a part of this community, and I, I, am, I am in awe and, and full of gratitude for, for what that has meant for me. As I have been thinking about this day and the fact that so many of us would be able to come together and to celebrate this place and what it means to us, I was remembering a lecture that Dr. Walter Buddy Sherman shared with us in 2012. And like any good Baptist historian and preacher, he had three points and used alliteration. And he said first that this place matters. And he talked about the fact that this place matters because it was put here in rural North Carolina in Harnett County to meet the needs of its community. This place matters, and it has been mattering for over 135 years through the university and through this divinity school. But then Dr. Sheridan said that purpose matters more than place. And he talked about the purpose of Campbell University and now through Campbell Divinity School and that this purpose, this place provides a purpose for students to come and to live in, to understand their calling, to prepare for their calling and to begin to live into that calling that they find in their lives. And so we each are living into our own purpose through the purpose of this institution. But Dr. Sheridan finished with this. He said, people embody the purpose and transcend the place. And I think that today we bear witness to that truth, that the people who embody Campbell University, that the people who embody Campbell University Divinity School are why we are here. We represent the noble mission of this university. We represent the calling that God has placed on our lives to, to prepare, to respond to the needs of our community, and to be leaders and ministers to the places where God has called us. And so today I'm grateful. I'm grateful that I can bear witness to God's goodness um, through the course of 135 years for the university, but the 25 plus years of Campbell University Divinity School. And I give thanks that I am a part of that rich heritage and that we share that story and that work together. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Wallace, and thank you so much, Faith. It's my job to tell you everything that Campbell University Divinity School is doing and is working to do. How much time do you have? <laughs> they told me five minutes. If I've only got five minutes, I'm going to tell you about two things. Two things that we're doing uh, in recent years that we feel like are uh, 
represent, representative of the ways that we are seeking to innovate while staying true to our mission and our identity as a divinity school. Two new degrees, or at least one new degree and one new method of delivery. One of those is the Master of Arts in Faith and Leadership Formation. It's a very long title for a degree. Master of Arts in Faith and Leadership Formation. This is a degree that we design from the ground up to be specifically targeted towards persons in the church who understand themselves to be called into vocation, not necessarily as a minister, to be called as a lawyer, to be called as a chef, to be called as a teacher, to be called as uh, a business person, to be called in any number of different areas of life but they understand that as a calling from God. And they want to be equipped to live out that calling faithfully and well. And so we designed a degree from the ground up. Uh, we have had three cohorts, uh, now in our fourth cohort, uh, of the Master of Arts in Faith and Leadership Formation, rich diversity of persons coming from so many different vocational backgrounds, who come and, and are committed to growing in their faith uh, and their vocation. Uh, that degree has been transformative uh, in many ways for us and for those who have been attending that, who have been part of that degree. Uh, it, has, it has been clear to us uh, that the church is in need of persons who are investing deeply in their faith not just ministers, although we think that's good too, <clears throat> we definitely are about that, but, but not just ministers, persons who say, I want to do more, and I want to be equipped to do that. Uh, and we have a number of people here today, alumni and current students, who represent that degree. That's one of the things that we have done just in the last few years. The other thing that I will mention is a new delivery of the Master of Arts in Christian Ministry. We've had the Master of Arts in Christian Ministry degree for many years. It is a shorter degree, a more focused degree for ministry, but it's a degree that, uh, like all of our degrees, has been in person in the traditional formats that we have used. As we have emerged from COVID, we have realized the need for access, but we also are committed to the essential need for community. For us as a divinity school, community is not a nice luxury. It's not an extra that we would desire to have. Community is something essential to the experience and transformation that occurs in divinity school. So how do we do that? How do we have a, a degree that is available to people who are at various places, remote places, uh, and yet have that form of community? Uh, we were able to do a, uh, an unintentional experiment during COVID uh, to see that we could have uh, a very effective and powerful sense of community if we were able to bring a cohort together in retreat format. A retreat format to anchor the cohort and then online, real time, using Zoom or things like that, real time online, uh, gave a, an incredible sense of community that just was not something that we saw available in any other kind of online or remote uh, access. So this past fall, we began to offer our Master of Arts in Christian Ministry in that hybrid format, anchored by a retreat. We have some folks here today uh, who are in that degree. Uh, and I was privileged to be part of uh, that first retreat that we did. Uh, with students coming from as far as Tennessee and other parts around uh, North Carolina. Uh, and we gathered for that retreat. Uh, and it was such a rich time of building community that continued as we continue to meet uh, in the, the real-time online format. Two examples 
that illustrate the ways that we as a divinity school are committed to the, the things that have made us distinctive as a school, particularly that sense of community that is so important to us, and yet also committed to finding ways into the future. Uh, I don't know if you know, uh, I don't want to shock anyone tonight, but it turns out that the church has changed <laughs> and the world has changed. And we are committed to finding ways to continue to be accessible and relevant and meaningful and, and transformative uh, in the world and in the church as it changes. Two examples, I could give you many more, but I think I've used up all my time. Thank you. I'm Tony Cartledge, professor of Old Testament and whatever since 2007. It's a delight, such a delight to see all of you who are here and to share with us. In planning this, there was some discussion about perhaps inviting some uh, alumni to take the floor and share some of their memories. Then it was decided not. Instead, when we emailed all of the alumni who we had working emails for, we invited you to make a little video and share video greetings with us. We can edit the videos. <laughs> and several of you responded to that, and we want to share those videos with you now, so please enjoy these words from your Campbell colleagues. Happy anniversary, Campbell University Divinity School. You know, when the Divinity School first started, I was a freshman undergrad at Campbell. And I remember how excited everyone was that there was a Divinity School coming to the university. But never did I imagine as a freshman at that time that I would one day be a student at the Divinity School. So to Campbell University Divinity School, I say to you, thank you. Thank you for affirming the call that God had on my life. Thank you for walking with me on my spiritual and academic journey. My prayer is that God will continue to bless Campbell University Divinity School for many years to come. One of the greatest memories that I have from my time attending the school was the night before starting my classes in January of 2019. I remember receiving a, receiving a call from one of the current students at the time who wanted to encourage me and they brought on their other friends who are also attending the school. And they just started encouraging me and praying for me as I started my time at the Divinity School. And they, to even today, are some of the greatest friends that I have in the world. I can recall even those same friends cutting up with me and some others in our ministry of preaching class that took place in one of the evening sessions of the day. And I can recall we had the opportunity to preach during the class, but it was funny because for some reason, we would start singing and do, making an impromptu choir. And in between the preachers, we would sing and we would do all that extra stuff that we do in church. I have lots of favorite memories of Campbell Divinity School, but perhaps one of my most favorite memories is traveling to the Holy Land with all of my peers, with their families. We were able to go and experience what we had been reading about and studying about uh, during our, our hard times of writing papers and studying for exams. We saw that come to life on that trip when we went to the Holy Land, and I will be forever grateful for that wonderful memory. One of my favorite memories was the spiritual formation retreat that we got to go on where we looked at Henry Nouwen's Life of the Beloved. And my favorite part about that was not only the study, but also seeing Dr. Hogan try a fruit roll-up for the first time in his life. And my favorite memory is uh, one of community, um, the opportunity to uh, decompress in between classes. Uh, as heavy as they were, 
with friends in the lounge and the chance to laugh at Divinity School together. Memories from Campbell University Divinity School, certainly the camaraderie between the students and the faculty and staff, something I'll always cherish. And the other thing that I took away would be that Campbell might have taught you how to think theologically, but it never told you what to think theologically. And I think that was probably one of the best takeaways. And of course, Dr. Wakefield, so what? When I think about my favorite moments at Campbell, certainly milestone moments like the commissioning service or graduation come to mind, but really the most impactful moments were probably the times in between classes when I got to speak with friends and ministers and hear their true heart for ministry in a variety of settings. My greatest memories of Campbell Divinity School are having the opportunity to sit and soak up the wisdom that is Dr. Michael Cogdell. In 1996, I went to the school to talk with Dr. Bruce Powers about uh, my sense of calling. And after our long conversation, he was such a good listener. My favorite memory is a faculty member happened to walk into the office where we were talking. And he turned to the faculty member and said, I want you to meet Joy Heaton. God has called her to be a pastor. It still chokes me up to this day that he affirmed my calling. One of my favorite memories from Campbell was we got to the end of our um, time at Campbell and we had a chapel service. And in that chapel service, our kids um, represented um, Mary and Joseph and the angel um, and right in the middle of the chapel service. And such an incredible way to show how family is important at Campbell and how, um, how the story was told using our own kids. My name is Kara. I'm the oldest daughter. Um, and my favorite memory at Campbell is, is any time that we went to chapel together as a family because I have such fond memories of chapel. Uh, and I'm Steven, uh, and my favorite memory at Campbell is going to football games and basketball games. My name is Alex Miller, and my favorite memory is when I used to run around the fountain um, uh, by the chapel and just like run around all the time, every single time I was there. As you can see, Campbell Divinity School really made an impact on not just Kim and myself, but our entire family. I have so many great memories of my time there, but most of my favorite memories come from the spiritual formation retreats because of the space they allowed for fun, for vulnerability and honest conversations. Through worship and breakout sessions and small groups and games and meals and rigging up a screen to watch March Madness together, um, I was reminded of the importance of community. As ministers, we often give without cultivating community too much for ourselves. And so these retreats reminded me that that's important. And I have carried that into my ministerial career working and being intentional about cultivating community for myself and other ministers. One of my greatest memories was traveling with the 2015 Bible Land Study Tour to Israel and the West Bank area, where I preached on the very shores of the Sea of Galilee, where Jesus walked and talked and preached. I walked the streets of Jerusalem, and I participated in an archeological dig at Tel Marashi. There, I celebrated with two other classmates as we found an archaeologically complete oil lamp. To God be the glory. One memory that I would like to share is it's kind of sad, but not. My son and his wife had just lost their first child and they were living in Atlanta. So I had to leave school and I went to share with Elaine what was going on with me. Elaine said to me, Sharon, you have not allowed yourself to be a part of the Cuts community. And at that time, she pulled out the Hogan in and they prayed with me and they allowed me to cry and share. It's at that moment that I really, really, really became part of the Cuts community. So I love that Campbell University is Christ-centered, Bible-based, and ministry-focused. But I love, absolutely love the camaraderie. I love the community. I have friends that are still my friends that I met at Campbell and I will always be a part of Kemi University Divinity community. I have so many wonderful memories of at Campbell Divinity, but one that really sticks out is the day of our commissioning in Butler Chapel. 
that day affirmed for me that, yes, I was really called to serve the Lord as a minister for him. And I was filled with a wonderful peace beyond all understanding. I'm so glad God allowed me to have an opportunity to, to be a part of such a wonderful divinity school. I learned so much. Um, and I thank God for all my cohorts and some of the fondest members we had was coming together in class and just sharing our personal and religious experiences. And we found out at the end of the day, we all kind of just the same. And I thank my professors, uh, all of my professors, uh, for just taking the opportunity to engage with us as students. Hey, one of my favorite memories, playing kickball in the courtyard out in front of D. Rich in the Divinity School. Uh, I kicked a boomer home run one time and it was really great. I was so excited to start Divinity School and took a bit of a hiatus to spend some time in Nairobi, Kenya and came back and Campbell was gracious enough to allow me to start back made some great friends, had some wonderful professors, um, had some great classes. I'm very grateful for the time that I spent at Campbell and I'm very, very grateful that Campbell Divinity School is uh, a part of my heritage and look forward to many years to come with the Divinity School. I am the person that I am today because of the molding and shaping that I was allotted at this school. Um, when I think of my memories, um, I'm reminded of how tired Divinity School made me. And I think I was the first and only recipient of the I'm So Tired Award. So happy anniversary to Campbell University Divinity School. I love you guys and continue to prepare scholars to impact the world for Christ. Just wanting to say congratulations to Campbell University Divinity School, celebrating 25 years of being Christ-centered, Bible-based, ministry-focused. I became a part of the Campbell family just over 10 years ago and can't even begin to describe how much my ministry has been enriched, has been helped. So grateful for all the faculty and staff and the wonderful people that comprise this community. I regret that I cannot be with you this morning on this high and holy day. But my heart rejoices in what God has done, is doing, and will do in the lives of his servants through Campbell University. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into our thoughts or imaginations, all of the things that God has prepared for Campbell. One of my favorite things about Campbell is that it affords you the opportunity to learn and be immersed in different cultures. And so even today, I'm continuing that tradition here out on the Sea of Galilee in Israel. Shalom. Perhaps one of the things I love most about Campbell Divinity School is that it is truly a family. It is the place where you can ask the hard questions. It is a safe place to celebrate joyous things in our life. It is a place to cry with those when things are hard. It is the place where you go to when you simply need community, a faith community, people who are on the journey with you. So family is what I think about when I think about Campbell University Divinity School. I definitely say people and community is my favorite part of Campbell Divinity, like getting to have friends that become uh, peers in ministry and mission down the road as well. What I love most about Campbell Divinity School is the opportunity to have fellowship with like-minded believers and the community that is developed in Campbell. I still have friends that I met at Campbell that I keep in contact with to this very day. I got to attend Campbell back in the early days of the late 90s. And I have to say, Campbell helped me to define my call, to uh, find my voice, not just as a minister, but as a follower of Christ, to trust God's spirit in me and to help me to find ways to, to really hear and listen to that spirit. I got to be at Campbell while I was working at First Baptist. And so every day I came back able to put into practice um, things that I had learned in class because it really is Christ-centered, Bible-based, and ministry-focused. And I am so very, very grateful for all of the friends and faculty and staff who've made Campbell possible. You know, when someone asks me about Campbell Divinity School, I have to talk about the people that make up the Divinity School. The staff, the faculty are just hands down the most down-to-earth, smart, knowledgeable, 
kind-hearted, gracious people that I have met um, in a long time. To have that many kind people in one place, ju you just know that you're going to have a great experience. And that was my experience. Yes, the content was there. We learned about leadership. We learned about faith. We learned how to walk out our faith amongst our peers and amongst those um, in the world. And I tell you, that content has stuck with me and will continue to stick with me for the rest of my life. But hands down, the best part of my experience and my time at Campbell Divinity School were my classmates and the professors. My favorite thing about Campbell Divinity is that Campbell Divinity is family and to this day I can call on any professor or any fellow student and um, for anything um, and I love that. One of my joyful memories is my own commissioning service on the 10th anniversary of the school where I received my own pin and where Dr. Cogdell declared it a high and holy day. I give God thanks for my Christ-centered, Bible-based, ministry-focused education that I received. I am so grateful for Campbell Divinity School. It was a place that encouraged me and gave me the confidence to stand in front of a pulpit, especially as a woman, and share the Word of God. Uh, I'm also grateful for the fellowship and the people you meet, and especially for meeting the love of my life. I too am grateful, so grateful for Campbell and thankful. It's a wonderful place to grow for the good and it's um, a refreshing oasis. One of the things that I've always appreciated about Campbell is that in the midst of biblical education and theological education, the school was very intentional about investing in our spiritual formation and growth. And to me, that was just one of the ways that Campbell was living out its mission statement of being Christ-centered, Bible-based, and ministry-focused. I love Campbell Divinity School for all the encouragement, affirmation, and love I received from both the professors and from my fellow classmates that I got to know there. For the first time in my life, I was accepted for who I was. And everyone there affirmed that, yes, God had called me and I was supposed to be there. What God led me to learn at Campbell Divinity permeates everything I do every day in ministry and in my life. When I think about my experience at Divinity School, I really think of the relationships that I formed, the opportunity um, to be in an environment that was really there to encourage and foster the calling that I had in my life. Learning, the academics, super, super important. But I think for me, when I think about what really mattered during that time in my life was being loved and known and challenged by my professors and by my classmates, solidifying that calling that God has had in my life to be in family ministry. Happy anniversary to all alums and faculty, friends, past and current, who have made Campbell University Divinity School a success, especially to my peers who were brave enough, determined enough, and trusting enough to be in the first class, the founding class. You believed as I did that Campbell University was the best possible place for a divinity school that would be Christ-centered, Bible-based, and ministry-focused. I shared that dream and gladly jumped in the stream the second year as part of the charter class. I received a top-notch theological and practical education that served me well, enriched my life, and I made some lifelong friends. So thanks be to God for his providential guidance in the formation and the ongoing development of our fine school. Hello, I'm Derek Hogan. I serve as Associate Dean at the Divinity School and teach in the area of uh, New Testament and uh, spiritual formation. And I'm here to uh, begin, let me turn this off. Uh, you've had your chance to see him already. Uh, to begin a, a few special presentations. In 2003, Dr. Lydia Hoffman Hoyle came to Campbell University Divinity School, and we haven't quite been the same since. 
she has taught for the last 20 years here, 20 of the 25 or so years of the Divinity School, teaching church history, Christianity in America, Baptist and denominational history, women in Christian tradition, senior synthesis, and lots of spiritual formation retreats, and a few others. One of Dr. Hoyle's great gifts is making the study of history accessible and enjoyable for students who do not think they enjoy studying history. In Dr. Hoyle's classes, history is not the recitation of cold, dry facts. She expertly guides students through thousands of years of Christian history, facilitating lively discussions, provoking critical thinking, and drawing relevance to contemporary ministry contexts. She tells the stories of Christianity and shows why the wisdom of the past is still useful today, and not just useful in a utilitarian kind of way, but how it can be helpful for us as we seek to be more faithful followers of Jesus. One of the Divinity School's hallmarks, as we all know, is promoting spiritual formation in the life of its students. And Dr. Hoyle has been at the forefront of that effort as the key facilitator on spiritual formation retreats for over a decade. I have often had the chance to help her in these retreats, and they are some of the most memorable and fulfilling experiences I have had in Divinity School. Dr. Hoyle is masterful in making room for God to show up in these sacred moments in community. She is a natural community builder in retreats and in the classroom and just in life. In classes, she knows her students. She prays for them by name. She spends time with them outside of class. She shows up for them when they need her. And in all these things, her wise counsel is matched by her good humor and joy. She has worked tirelessly for the good of this community over the last 20 years. One example of that is the work that she did in dreaming and launching the Master of Arts and Faith and Leadership Formation degree that Dr. Wakefield mentioned. Uh, she was also instrumental at the height of the pandemic in thinking of how to keep us safe and also in community. And she has chaired the committee to make this day possible. Her talents and skills as a teacher and researcher are many, and she has sought to continually improve those throughout her career. But she is even more serious about growing in her own life of faith. And it is in that active life of faith that brings an added depth to her teaching, advising, and other aspects of her life. She has been a great gift to this community. At the end of this academic year, Dr. Hoyle will be retiring from her labors here. She will be deeply missed but her imprint will long continue on this community. She did not want any special recognition tonight. Uh, we had to plan that around her, and her, <laughs> her, her being the chair kind of was not always easy. Uh, and we kind of kept everything uh, secret. But we did want to give this community a chance to show our deep appreciation for her and her work here. And now I'd like to recognize uh, Peter Donlan, a 2007 graduate of the Divinity School and current director of plan giving uh, at Campbell University for another presentation. So has this been a day? Um, one of my favorite things to do, um, which I learned back in Divinity School, was to help people process their story. That's one of my absolute favorite things to do. And I do that in my role uh, at Campbell. Um, I did it at Divinity School, but now do it through plain giving the majority of the time, which is one of my greatest loves. But I want to share a story with you. And I want to invite some special people to the stage. Olivia Hoyle. And Rick Hoyle. Is this going to be 
a good thing. So, <clears throat> for the past six months or so, I have the opportunity. I had the opportunity to experience a special relationship at the special story. So, I also want to invite the Mosses, Jim and Susan. Now, the Mosses are, are dear friends of the Hoyles, um, but Jim uh, studied uh, at the law school when, he, when it was here on campus. And Susan is a 1976 graduate from the School of Arts and Sciences and a music education degree. It's not every lifetime that one has the occasion to crash a divinity school <laughs> celebration. Here am I, Lord. Send me. We are Jim and Susan Moss from the little formerly agrarian hamlet of Youngsville, a few miles from the town of Wake Forest, where at the time of uh, the founding of this wonderful divinity school, we had the uh, <coughs> amazing uh, good fortune of being Sunday school <coughs> members and staff members with Bruce, Dr. Bruce Powers, Dr. Malcolm Tolbert, Dr. Thomas Jackson, Ginger Graves, and Dr. Roy DeBrand. <clears throat> we were here uh, at the organization and founding We've been a little bit scarce since then. <laughs> but we have been fabulously represented by Dr. Lydia Huffman Hoyle. Uh, our being here goes back um, 50 years next month when my minister at the time at Youngsville Baptist Church, finished his studies at Southeastern Baptist Seminary and accepted a call to a little, also formerly uh, textile and furniture hamlet of Drexel near Morganton, North Carolina. <clears throat> when he left, we stayed in touch and uh, the following fall, he invited me to, uh, I thought, participate in, uh, I think, what he called a lay renewal weekend. It was the first time I'd ever taken a journey of that uh, length. Uh, I, I somehow or another, this was before full interstate, but somehow or another I made it up to... Uh, to uh, Drexel that, uh, I believe it was an October weekend. And uh, <clears throat> like this moment, in looking back, I kind of feel like I was crashing that occasion <laughs> as well because uh, I was expecting to stay with the minister and there was no room at the inn. Uh, and I got introduced to Frank and Polly Huffman and Jane uh, and Lydia and Robert. Um, <clears throat> I never made it to uh, spend time with, uh, with the minister. They uh, graciously took me in um, and uh, I try to think of what, uh, how to term uh, the relationship 
that uh, Lydia and I have had, and there's not quite a word that fits. Uh, think of us as, us as buddies, friends. So I'm going to take some liberties, and I'm going to uh, noun a verb. I guess I'm there verbing a noun. Uh, and, and call, call us uh, agapes. And uh, we have uh, been through a lot of apexes and naders, more naders on my side. Uh, one irony to me is uh, one of my great naders was uh, <clears throat> in the early 80s, somehow or another, this institution uh, let me in law school. And I spent, uh, let's see, let me get my orientation right, a pretty wonderful year in old uh, Leighton dorm, which I recently learned was the first male dorm built at Campbell. And it certainly showed its age when I was there uh, <laughs> 40 years ago. Uh, and it was about 100 yards over this way, where my understanding is the admissions building is, is now. But for uh, a year, I looked across, I think they call it the academic circle at Kivett Hall, and I walked across there and I went through boot camp. Uh, and looking back, that was actually uh, uh, the first occasion uh, that uh, Dr. Hoyle, at that time, Lydia Huffman, voice was actually on this campus. Uh, she didn't know it properly. Uh, and it was uh, over the phone in my ear. But uh, shortly thereafter, we, uh, we, got, we all got, two couples got married, and we have continued uh, our uh, our relationship, and we've, we've traveled quite a bit together. We've taken on a whole lot of projects and raised a family and families that are now strewn across the country. And Susan and Rick have been uh, mighty gracious to uh, accommodate uh, our uh, sort of pre-existing uh, uh, agapeing. And uh, with this, I'd like to ask Susan to make some remarks. Susan, by the way, yes, is uh, a graduate of this fine university in music education, uh, where, unlike me, she was an outstanding student. <laughs> Established the Dr. Lydia Huffman Hoyle Endowed Scholarship. We are endowing this scholarship in honor of our friend Dr. Lydia Huffman Hoyle to recognize her as a gifted professor, a dedicated colleague, and a loyal friend. She is a person of compassion, humor, generosity of spirit, who has had a positive influence on hundreds of lives. She has a special gift of encouragement, especially for women in ministry. She and Rick and their family have been our dear friends for many years, and we are grateful to have shared the journey with them. I want to read to you an article Lydia wrote called A Day in the Life. Today I left home with a mental list of all I needed to accomplish. I thought I would start the day preparing for my afternoon class, Women in Christian Tradition. We were scheduled to explore how Jesus treated women. It was too important a topic to handle poorly, so I needed to give some serious time to preparation. Writing a letter of recommendation was also on my agenda. One of my students is hoping to become a CPE intern. 
She needs a letter from a professor before her application is considered complete. Third on my agenda was a book review. I had read most of the book, but the review itself needed to be written. The due date was today. I arrived on campus and discovered a student sitting outside my door. Meeting with a student was not on my to-do list, but the look on the student's face told me that her need was more important than anything else I had planned. We talked and cried and prayed for nearly an hour. The lines on her face were not so deep when she left. I had settled in to prepare for class when I heard a knock on my door. A former student had come to tell me that he had an opportunity to talk to pastors in his association in a couple days and needed, quote, ammunition to make, them the, co to make the cause for ordaining women, an idea most folks in his association had not been willing to consider. I pulled books from my shelves for him, and we talked about responding in a way that both honored the scripture and the God who calls. By the time the conversation ended, it was time for chapel. One of my colleagues was preaching today. He described his sermon as a love letter to God, and it was just that. It washed over me and changed me. How amazing to get to work and worship with such gifted people. It needed to be a cheese and cracker or lunch kind of day, but if you preach one of the best sermons ever, someone ought to at least take you to lunch. <laughs> so I felt even further off my schedule. After lunch, I had two hours to address my to-do list. At this point, preparing for class had to be on the front burner. With only brief interruptions to discuss grades and tests, I was able to focus on Jesus and women for a while. I went to class and we had a great discussion about the kind of God we serve and how Jesus affirmed women both through his actions and through his words. At 5 o'clock class ended, I headed home, dinner, homework, conversation filled the evening hours, but at 9 I returned to the recommendation letter. It is now sent. The book re review will have to wait till tomorrow. I'm exhausted. But like most days, I feel so fortunate because I get to spend my days thinking about and talking about things that matter, preparing and caring for people who have committed their lives to serving God and enjoying family, friends, and colleagues and students with whom I am privileged to share the journey. I believe that God was in my schedule today and perhaps especially in the interruptions. Jim and I asked that this... Um, be included in the um, document here for this scholarship because I think it give, it highlights what the many strengths of Lydia's ministry. What stands out to me in this article is that is this: loving and caring for people comes first, and that may be the most important lesson Dr. Hoyle has ever taught. Especially want to thank Peter, Andy, Derek, others of you who are not many, I don't think, who have been aware of, of this and, 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 facilit and, faci and for, for facilitating this. Uh, <laughs> thank you. She always figures out everything. <laughs> so... The story continues. Danny Hester, come see me. I have a secret too. <laughs> First of all, let me thank you. I am Danny Hester. I'm the university organist. Let me thank every one of you for singing Holy, 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 so beautiful today. Oh, man, if you want to make an organist heart just race, sing like that. Oh, man, it, that was just 
Incredible. So thank you for that. Um, I came to Campbell University in 1975 when Dr. Wallace came to Campbell University. I was not the university organist at that time. I was a freshman. <laughs> and um, some pretty neat things were going to happen for me while I was here. And everybody has their Campbell story. And mine's pretty special, too. And that's part of my secret today. I would like to ask Ginger and Dick to come up here to be with Susan and Jim. Uh-huh, Susan's saying, I don't know what's happening. <laughs> I do, Susan. I met Susan Cornwell in the fall of 1975 when I came to this university. I was a piano music major when I arrived upon the scene, and I was enjoying piano so much. But in the old music building, the white barracks, we called them over there, we had a student lounge. And right beside the student lounge was the organ practice room. And so all the kids would be in there talking about the things that had gone on. And the organist would be in the organ practice room making the, the lounge kind of shake a little bit. Well, music majors spent quite a bit of time in that lounge after our music theory class. Now, music theory was tough. That second year of music theory Wow, tears. <laughs> it, it was incredible. And it just so happened that the organ professor was also that second year theory teacher. And she had high expectations, very high expectations. Well, I was sitting in the lounge that freshman year. And Susan was preparing her senior recital. And I had enjoyed hearing her play in the lounge. And she invited me into the practice room to time several of her pieces that she was preparing for her recital. Because with Miss Horton, you had to have it timed down just to the second. You had to know everything that was going on there. Well, as I timed that music for Susan... I watched her feet glide over the pedal board. I watched her hands glide over the keyboard. What an amazing musician at such a young age. A total memorized recital. Miss Horton expected nothing less. But Susan had that down pat. There were so many things to watch Susan do as she was seated at that instrument. I wanted to be an organ major because of Susan. So the next day, I went and changed my major. And I have Susan to thank that for. Just what an amazing lady. She has served churches well with her musician friend up here. I think behind me, yeah. right behind me. She earned a teaching certificate, of course, in music education. And it so happened, I had a wonderful high school music teacher, Dr. Joanne Bowman at, at Sanford Central. And it ended up that Susan went to my high school to student teach, where she did an outstanding job. And Dr. Bowman, who is approaching 90 now, still ask me about Susan every once in a while. She wants to know how she's doing. This past November, I was, I have been at the same church in Sanford at Jonesboro Methodist Church for 40 years. And I did a recital for my 40-year anniversary there. And um, Dr. Wallace came, and, and we, we just all had a good time. And I was at the reception, and all of a sudden I looked over, and there was Susan 
Susan came to support me. I had no idea she was coming, and I was just thrilled to see Susan there. Susan has been admired by many, many people with all of her talents, and she is certainly a representative of what Campbell University tries to produce, is producing, and will produce in the future. She is, she's just, she has Campbell written all over, as Jim does too. So, uh, Jim has decided to honor his wife today by establishing a music scholarship for a music student. So, congratulations, Susan. I had the honor of working with Susan for over 25 years. And all I can say is I never had to direct her a single time because all I had to do was drop like this. And she knew exactly the right tempo. She knew exactly the right expression. And she's the most incredible musician that I've ever had the opportunity to work with. And I give thanks that I can be here tonight to celebrate this with her. Thank you, Campbell. So, I don't think Lydia would get mad at me now, <clears throat> but I need to talk about fundraising. Just for a minute. So, on your places, on your tables, you're going to see this card. And on the front side is priorities for the Divinity School. There is a QR code here that helps you give quickly. But if you want to talk to me or anybody in development, you can fill it out and see me afterwards. That's all. We do have one more special presentation tonight, uh, and this is a secret, but Lydia does know about this one. <laughs> she just said, praise God. At least she knows one of the secrets that, that we have. I want to invite Dr. Michael Cogdell to come to the stage. And I also want to ask Gail to come with him to support him. Twenty-six years ago, I came to Campbell as an adjunct professor, and one of the first things that I experienced was a barbecue, uh, I think it was hot dogs and hamburgers maybe, uh, at uh, the Cogdell's home as they were welcoming new students for uh, what must have been the, the charter class uh, of the Divinity School. Uh, I was carrying uh, my oldest daughter in my arms. Uh, she was six months old. And uh, I have been uh, blessed to be influenced and to be mentored and to be uh, led by Dr. Cogdell ever since. Uh, he has been a wonderful colleague, a wonderful leader. Uh, he has been a pastor and a youth minister. Uh, he continues to be an interim pastor. I think you're up to about 35 churches now that you've interim pastored. Not quite that, Not quite that many, but it's been a lot. Uh, everywhere I go, people say, oh, do you know my friend Mike Cogdell? Tell him hi for me. Everywhere I go, people say, oh, Dr. Cogdell was my interim pastor or my pastor. Uh, he is known all over this state for his pastoral skills. He is certainly known in this place for his leadership. Uh, he, uh, together with Dr. Bruce Powers and Dr. Jerry uh, Wallace, uh, as you have already heard, spent many, many, many nights, uh, evenings and nights, planning, thinking, exploring, uh, thrashing out the details uh, of what would become Campbell University Divinity School. Uh, out of those discussions came the mission statement that we love, Christ-centered, Bible-based, ministry-focused. Out of those discussions came the spiritual formation 
focus of this school. Out of those discussions came the decision that Dr. Cogdell would lead this school as the founding dean. He did so with, with wonderful grace and humility, uh, insight, uh, and I have to confess that after I have uh, taken on that role, uh, I now appreciate him even more uh, because I know how much goes into that role. Without further ado, I want to um, uh, invite, uh, let's see, uh, Derek, are you going to come? Where's Derek? There we go. Uh, Derek Hogan will come and unveil something, and Mike and Gail, if you want to step up a little bit so you can see what is being unveiled. Uh, we commissioned something uh, that uh, we wanted to be able to hang in Taylor Hall uh, to celebrate the leadership of Mike Cogdell. Uh, for our school. This is the portrait of Mike Cogdell, the Dean of the Divinity School. This is quite a surprise, uh, but I thank you from the b bottom of my heart. Thank you. I, I don't know that I'm supposed to do this, but I'm going to anyway, and that is to recognize the artist who is here among us, uh, Susan Cartledge. My name is Caleb Oladipo, and I'm the professor and inaugural Snellis Chair of Christian Evangelism and Mission at Campbell University Divinity School. One of the things I learned um, when I joined the faculty in 2016 uh, was that I was the latest addition to the faculty members at Campbell. And I usually tell my colleagues at faculty meetings that I'm the youngest on the faculty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but tonight, um, gratitude honors God and humanity. A spirit of gratitude is our deepest personal response to the gift of life. Gratitude rekindles the ancient flame of the human indebtedness to the almighty God. Although thanksgiving and gratitude are closely related and they are forever inseparable in our consciousness, it occurs to me tonight that gratitude is an inner condition, is an inner attitude. Therefore, we must perpetually be grateful to God. And tonight, we are grateful for a Christ-centered, Bible-based, and ministry-focused theological education offered at Campbell University Divinity School. Please join me now as we do the litany of gratitude. It's on your tables at the very back is the litany. So I will read the light print, and then you will read with me the bold print. Lit litany of gratitude. Oh God, we are grateful that you called us, and you carved out a space within us where your holy presence abides. You fill us with your creativity so that we may be empowered 
to bear fruits of your mission and transformation. In our ministries, we have seen that your kingdom is beyond our vision. When you called us, we answered to establish a theological education that is Christ-centered. By your grace, O oh God, students, staff, and faculty have come to Campbell University Divinity School to meet you. You hallowed this place of service and challenge us to experience your holiness. You inspired us to be faithful to your calling and you transformed our classrooms to become Bible-based. We are grateful to thee, O oh God. In our ministry, we realized, O oh God, that no pastoral prayers can fully express our faith in you. No confession can bring perfection, and no hospital visits can bring wholeness. Yet, you have shown us that our responsibility is to plant the seed of your love and mission in the world that we grow. You enlarge our vision to know that we are shepherds, not miracle workers. We are ministers, not messiahs. You are grateful to the hug. Your rays shine upon us. You are unwavering in your assurance and you made no unambiguous promise to guide us always. You are our garment most protective, our coat most worthy, and ornament most glorious. We are grateful to you, Lord. Our redemption is complete because your grace is inexhaustible. You are the defender of the poor, the protector of the marginalized, and the giver of hope for the hopeless. Your hand looks your mission in the world. Your wisdom inspires us. Your hand protects us. Your light illuminates our paths. And now our primary we love you everything we have to Call us to be ministry focused and we will enjoy all the days of our lives. Amen. Hello, friends. I'm Cameron Jorgensen. I'm the Associate Professor of Christian Theology and Ethics at the Divinity School, and I'm also the Program Director for the Master of Arts in Faith and Leadership Formation. And my heart is full. I hope yours is too. I have two announcements to make. One is that there will be a group photo after this event ends right up here with the founding class and the charter class with Dr. Cogdell and Dr. Powers and Dr. Wallace. So if you are in one of those groups, please come on up here after the event is over. The other announcement is for those of you who are fortunate enough to be at a table with one of those glorious centerpieces, the, uh, uh, the lovely flower centerpieces. Uh, there are, uh, uh, if you are at one of those tables, on the back of your program for this evening, there may be a green dot. And if it is, rejoice, for that centerpiece is yours. <laughs> I almost feel like I just called bingo. Do we have a bingo? <laughs> 
Friends, I am so glad that Dr. Oladipo led us in a litany of gratitude because, as I said, my heart is full. How could we be anything but grateful in this moment? We are surrounded by an an embarrassment of riches. Hasn't that been what this night has been about? To recognize the many gifts that we've been given and theological education, relationships such as these, and even good food (laughs) to remind us that God sustains us for the journey that we've been called to pursue. Yeah. So all that's left is a benediction. A lovely Latin word just mean a good word for the road. May I give that good word to you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance on you and grant you peace this day and always. For it's in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, that we pray these things. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being here, friends. My off.
Yeah. 